Hello, my friends, and welcome back. It is Thursday, March 21st, 2024. I'm the drunk pokeroo. Tis beer time. It's 9 o'clock on a Thursday night. Just got home from work. Well, I got home like 15 minutes ago. Had to get out of my work pants and into my, my lazy man pants. Uh, just having a beer after work. No big deal here. Not, you know, not a big crazy night. Just going to have a couple tree beers with the boys. No. Beer and watch the Sopranos episode. Then off the bed. From another Niagara and Lake Brewery. So we talk about... Oast House a lot, Silversmith we've been to many times. This one we haven't been to as often, but we did go last year. Uh, the Exchange Brewery, right in downtown Niagara on the lake, like right in the middle of all that picturesque friggin' tourist place. Uh, this is a company, the LCBO, called Extension. Two-way, West Coast IPA, 6.5%. Now, they went a little hop crazy here. They used Cascade, Centennial, Citrus, CTZ, CTZ. And Simcoe, CTZ is, uh, I wrote, wrote it down here. So I remember Columbus, Tomahawk, and Zeus. It's a lot of hop, but there's a lot of very traditional. Cascade is really, it's recognized, and I, when I Googled it, it's like the hop that made the American Pale Ale. It's been around since 1972. It's older than I am, for crying out loud. Uh, my favorite hop, Simcoe. I like Centennial, too. i got to say, Centennial's one of those hops I think is underrated. Um, but let's get into it, because I'm always looking for another West Coast IPA. The exchange certainly has grown in the last few years in terms of quality. I remember when we first went there years and years ago when they first opened up. It wasn't the best. They do do a lot of mixed fermentation stuff, so like a lot of sour stuff and, and mixed mixed fermentation. Um, that, that's a better way to describe it. No, I'm not Miss Polk style, right? So we don't usually go there very often. But once in a while we pop in. But I'm like, West Coast IPA, you had me at West Coast and you sold me at IPA. I mean, you like these bitter. I like these big bitter beers. I, I'm impressed already with the head. Looks nice. Uh, that color is deep. So I'm that kind of malt color when I see it. That kind of deep orangey um, reminds me of uh, Mad Tom or say Bone Shaker, which tend to be on the more bitter side, which is fine. Yeah, I'm. I, listen, I'm just guessing. I, I don't I, I don't like to call myself an aficionado. I'm not. I I do enjoy a, a snifter of pint of beer every once in a while. But uh, there's certain styles of beer that I consider myself at least well versed in. That I, when I speak, you know, you can know that I'm coming from a place of I like this thing. So yeah. Okay, let's get into it. Cheers, my friends. Always happy to see one. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, I would say that if we're to put this on the spectrum of West Coast IPAs, because remember, inside of that giant IPA, you know, you got your hazy New England style, the Vermont styles, the black IPAs, you got the West Coast. But even inside the West Coast IPA, there are sub-genres inside that that maybe not be recognized by the larger world, but we see them. There are different styles of West Coast. This one definitely leans more into the bone shaker side of things. So we have at one end of that spectrum, we have sort of headstock and lone pine, which while our West Coast IPAs tend to be a little less malt heavy. And then on the other end of that, you got bone shaker, which is a malt forward, big malt forward beer. This leans onto the other side, that, that malt forward, definitely a bigger toasty malt body. I would almost... It almost tastes like an American West Coast IPA. And I think if you're a person who has had American style, like from America, not just American style, because, you know, they're all American style West Coast IPAs. Like Michigan IPAs. So that toasty malt body, that kind of upfront orange and grapefruit pithiness, that resinous pine at the back. Um, there's it, it, It's bitter as hell. You know, it says 70 IBUs. Now, again, yes, IBUs are a measure of the alpha, blah, 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 blah. But still, you're expecting a bitter beer and you're getting that. I, it's, it's, it's all right. It's good. Um, I wouldn't put it in the category of Headstock or Lone Pine, but there's very few beers that actually get into that, that high of a, uh, a category. It reminds me, not even Mad Tom. It, like, honestly, I, I'd say Mad Tom is above that, too. It, more of bone shaker, but less malty than bone shaker.
Yeah, it's okay. It's 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 fine. It's it's nothing outstanding. You're not gonna. It's not gonna replace your usual West Coast IPA. But if you like West Coast IPAs and you want to try a little different one, like I said, I feel like this leans more into like an actual IPA, West Coast IPA from the states, from New York State, from Michigan. Really reminds me a lot of those when I had them. So that's quite interesting. And I'm, I'm glad they did it. And I think it's a, it's a good West Coast IPA. And I would have no problem drinking it again. It's a nice, bitter West Coast IPA. So there you go. I'm pleasantly surprised. I was a little trepidatious. I will give you that. But I am happily saying this is a decent beer, man. So there you go. Surprise me at the L. C. B. O. Hmm. New blog post today about... Uh, having enough too i'll leave a link down below you can go read it if you want it's not about beer it's just about you know having enough man i'm good are you good i'm good let's go cheers it just it has this there is a flavor to american made west coast ipas and it must be the yeast they use i don't know but this has it and it's very, it, it is reminiscent of some of those beers I had over the years that I got across the border. And I'm digging that. I, I got to admit, man, it is, it's nice that even inside my favorite style, there are subgenres. And we can go all night, baby, talking about those.